really sad day for parliamentary democracy, the rule of law in this country today. Did you know, Sir David? Yes, of course. Uh, we, you know, bump shoulders many, many times. He was always very jolly. I mean, he was one of those sort of smiling, jolly people. He'd been in, in Parliament almost 40 years. He never had any ministerial ambition whatsoever, which is rather refreshing. You know, he wasn't a greasy pole climber. Um, he was happy being an MP down in Essex. Um, I, I remember him saying to me once, oh, I really like you now, Nigel. I can see how many Labour voters in South End are going to vote for you. And that was his way of communicating. There was always a bit of humour. Um, chirpy is how I would describe him. A very chirpy, happy individual, not especially controversial. Uh, we all remember, those of us of a certain age, uh, the result in Basildon in 1992. It, it's just one of those big moments when you knew that Kennett wasn't going to win a major was. Um, so, look, I liked him. Um, yeah, I mean, what has happened is appalling, but not terribly surprising, to be honest with you. Um, and all the commentariat across all of the media are saying this shows the division in politics and why you know, people must all unite. No, this isn't about politics. This is societal change, societal breakdown and division. Just look at knife crime in London um, as one example. So uh, I, I think it, it, it's quite possible that many will draw the wrong conclusions from this. Uh, Michelle was careful a moment ago, but even the independent newspaper is saying this is a suspected Islamist attack. Uh, and I think, frankly, as somebody that had to live, I've lived under more uh, threat for a period of three or four years than outside the prime minister, probably anybody ever in British politics. That was because I went against the grain and I was demonized by, by mainstream media. I, I contacted the Home Office in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. 2019, to ask for help, to ask for security protection, and Colin, I got none. They point blank refused. Now, I had private security. If I hadn't, I would have been assaulted every single day. But I accept my profile was, was, was much higher than most MPs, but I frankly think in the modern world, given the increasing violence in society, and given that we have a number of people in this country who hate us and hate everything we stand for, and as, you know, a moment ago, Will Geddes rightly said, this makes headlines all over the world. It is utterly ludicrous that modern day members of parliament do not have a full time security guard properly trained with them when they're on all public duties and if people say that's a retrograde step actually it's not you know because if we don't do that how on earth can they meet their constituents how on earth can nigel, that link nigel i just wonder i mean you know michelle you you you've both stood for elected office i wonder if there are people tonight who are thinking <laughs> it's not worth the candle i've got a, i've got a you know spouse i've got children this is not the game it was. It's changed. The rules of the game have changed tonight. Well, it's exactly as I just said to you, Colin, as well. We was, uh, whilst I was waiting for you, Nigel, I was saying to Colin in the break, um, I have run for election twice, and I think, <laughs> yeah. Colin, stories like this make me think, thank goodness I never got elected. If we, um, if we bring it to the political conversation side, why do you think it is, and it seems to be getting worse in society now, that people simply cannot politically, respectfully disagree. It's not enough anymore to say, I don't share his or her opinion. There's got to be almost hatred attached to it. Why is that? Yes, I mean, you're right about that. And, 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 and of course, cancel culture lies deep at the heart of this, doesn't it? The idea that I disagree with you, therefore, you shouldn't be allowed to say what you're going to say um, is part of that. But I, this, I, I suspect when the full story about this 25-year-old Somalian comes out, uh, we will find uh, that it's actually even more uh, narrow than that. Uh, and we'll find somebody, um, I suspect, of an extreme Islamist bent uh, in this country who hates everything we stand for and wants to bring it down. And we have to be frank 
and honest with ourselves, we've been very lucky for the last few years not to suffer from bad terrorism on our streets. We had a spate of it a few years ago. But, but there are those in our society. Um, personally, um, I would have been more cautious about our immigration policy, but we are where we are, and we cannot go on with public officials going out to meet constituents, being out in the public space without them having proper security with them. Now, from the sounds of this attack, one of those situations where it was over before it had begun, but do you know what? A trained security person who'd sussed out that room before David Amos would have walked in, I would bet you 95% certain would have spotted a wrong one. And life's changing, not for the better in many ways, but it's changing. MPs need to have security. I've said it for years, uh, and, and tonight makes me certain of it. And I think there will be a change. And for all the talk, you know, for all the talk tonight about how we can make MPs safer and all the rest of it, they're going to have to have a heavy with them to go on doing this job. Otherwise, Michelle, people like you will never, good people won't volunteer for public office again. It's as simple as that. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.